Once you reach the chateau,
anybody there? Maybe we should throw her off a cliff. Did I ask for your opinion? No, but I was just thinking. Oh, you were, were you? Yes, I think keeping her alive is a bad idea. Is that so? You know how in spy shows the hero always gets away? Well, that just sets a considerable precedent, don't you think? Sure, it's just television shows, but it still makes me nervous. Take a look at that! Excuse me? I said look at her. You want to murder her? I don't want to. It just seems prudent. Prudent, eh? If you don't mind my saying so, you seem rather moralistic for a man who earns his living as a criminal. We've already killed thousands of people. What's one more? It wasn't me that killed them. You worked for the organizations that did. Doesn't that implicate you as well? They didn't ask me what I thought about it. Perhaps not, but you knew there was a possibility that such things could happen. Okay, maybe you're right. But that doesn't mean I want this girl's blood on my hands. Truth be told, I'd sooner kill you than her. Then I'll stop trying to convince you to throw her off the cliff. That's prudent of you. I must confess, I haven't been able to sleep since that explosion in England. Me neither, right? Can I ask you a question? What would you do if I began walking towards a gondola dock with the intention of leaving this organization? I might give you a piece of advice. What would that be? Don't get yourself killed. The thought had occurred to me. don't want any interruptions. Yes, ma'am. Wake up, princess. So, this is the indomitable Kate Archer, super spy. 
I hope Armstrong wasn't too rough with you, dear. I'm not sure whether it's his Scottish blood or his peasant heritage, but he's rather lacking in social polish. Oh, but you're Scottish too, aren't you? Oh, how insensible you are. Baroness Dumas, you're not what I expected. Is that so? Sorry if I'm a disappointment. Not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. Meeting your husband didn't lead me to expect much of the woman who'd choose to marry him. Oh, yes, my husband. He's a child in the body of a man. A rather large man. All I have to do is play mommy every once in a while and I get to spend his money any way I please. And he has plenty of money to spend. <laughs> but enough about my vocation, let's talk about yours. Your vocation? But I thought you were working for harm. Harm works for me, darling. I'm impressed. Not bad for a little orphan girl who went from princess to pauper. It takes a great deal of conviction to overcome adversity the way you have, or a great deal of hatred. A little of both, actually. I wouldn't have expected such insight from someone like you. Well, perhaps you don't know as much about me as you think. I know enough. A girl spy in a man's world? That takes gall, surely. That you've been such a damnable nuisance speaks highly of your talents. But the fact that you're my prisoner suggests that you overestimate yourself. Just a bit. A little girl who thinks she can take on the world. Is that so different from a little girl that thinks she can take over the world? Well, we're both ambitious. Too bad your ambition is so petty. Is that what you think? You might have done great things. Instead, look what you've settled for. Exacting revenge on people who remind you of those snobs that ostracized you and your mom after that nasty business with your father. You call it revenge? I call it house cleaning. House cleaning? That's right. Every one of these smug blue bloods I scrub out makes the world a little cleaner. As far as I'm concerned, they're lint. Uh, excuse me, Baroness. I said no interruptions! Somebody shoot this man! Where were we? Ah, oh, yes. You were more alive. Next, I suppose you'll tell me that I can't possibly succeed. Not if I have anything to do with it. Well, you certainly have spirit. Unfortunately, you won't have anything to do with it. Not unless you can rise from the grave, that is. Are you afraid to die? I haven't given it much thought. Thanks to the incompetence of the insufferable Inga Wagner, you still have some time for reflection. My instructions were to give you a ten-hour fuse, but that bloated moron gave you ten days, which leaves you roughly 45 minutes to live. I've been infected. At the club, that dart that hit my neck. Yes, and if it weren't for Fräulein Wagner's mind-numbing ineptitude, you'd already be dead. You get what you pay for. Isn't that the truth? You have no idea how hard it is to find qualified criminals these days. Nothing but misfits, mutants. I hope you don't expect sympathy. Not from a judgmental goody two-shoes like you. To you, I'm just a villain. Those pretty eyes of yours see only black and white. Well, sister, the world is a crueler mistress than I. Believe me, I would have gladly kept my dollhouses and fairy tales rather than suffering through what I did. But I didn't have a choice in the matter. You had a choice. You were just too weak to make the right one. You don't know anything about me, girl. You don't know what I went through. Those genteel bastards disowned my mother and me before the headlines even hit the papers. Now I'm going to show my gratitude by raining fire and destruction down upon their pedigree heads. Poor Felicity. 
that the world spat upon her, so now she's going to show them all. Is that it? I didn't give you permission to use my Christian name. We've more in common than I like to admit. The difference is that I stop taking my misfortunes personally. Everybody suffers, Baroness, but only cowards take it out on other people. Lord, you're a righteous little bitch. Maybe it will get you into heaven. I suppose you'll find out soon enough. Get Armstrong up here. I want someone competent guarding this door. That's not a very nice thing to say. Is that so? Well, after you fetch him, how would you like to take yourself outside and have yourself shot? That'll give you something to complain about. Looks like you got yourself in a heap of trouble this time, eh, lass? How about a fight? What are you yapping about? A fight. You and me. Mano a mano. You're challenging me to a fight? If I win, you let me go. And if I win? I'm already at your mercy. Are you a sportsman or a bully? As entertaining as it sounds, I'm not about to stake my reputation as a master criminal on a dare from a wee little girl. Coward. Are you trying to provoke me? You're just afraid I'd clobber you. Ha! I'd be more afraid of an angry chipmunk. I always figured you for a sissy. I dare you to say that again. I hear you had a torrid love affair with Inga Wagner. Ha! In her fantasies, maybe. You hit like a girl, anyway. If you're not careful, I'll fold you across my knee and thrash you till you shriek. Oh, that's right. I forgot you don't like girls. Say that again and I'll wash your mouth out with soap. I'd smack the crap out of you if I didn't think it buries both. You're a feisty little wench, aren't you? That's it! You pushed me too far, Gerlin!
do you intend to keep your word and let me go? Or do I need to pummel you some more? I may be a villain, but I'm not a liar. A promise is a promise. What about you? Time to look for a new job, I suppose. I'm definitely not sticking around here to discuss your escape with the Baroness. Maybe you should consider a legitimate career next time. My skill set is a bit too, uh, specialised for legitimate work. Don't you worry about me, I'll make do. I owe you. That you do, and don't forget it either. Can I ask one more favour of you? You can ask. The list of names, where does the Baroness keep it? Sorry, I can't help you. Do you have any idea how many innocent people will die if the Baroness isn't stopped? What do I care? Don't give me that. Imagine some crazy woman with a chip on her shoulder blew up your mum. How would that make you feel? My mum's already dead. Answer my question, big ox, or I'll pummel you so bad you'll be picking your own teeth out of your arse. Okay, fine, I'd be sad. Is that what you want to hear? I might even cry like a ninny. Are you happy now? Just think about all the people that'll lose their mums and their sons and their wives, all because some power-mad baroness had a bad childhood. You want that on your conscience? All right, enough. Fine. As far as I know, she keeps the bloody thing in a safe in her underground lair. There's an elevator behind a woodpile downstairs. You're a resourceful lass. You'll figure it out.
even need to mention that I don't want to be interrupted. No, ma'am. Good.
Resourceful, all right. I'll find her. There isn't much time. Less than an hour. More than enough. Just be <laughs> sure not to leave without me. I wouldn't dream of it. What about Armstrong? Vanished. Kill him too while you're at it.
terribly. Every moment I'm away from you is pure torture. How I've longed to take you in my arms and whisper words of love into your ear. unexpected. You meddlesome imp. Guards, kill her! Yes! you have the list, you must get off this mountain alive. You should expect heavy opposition. It's what you don't expect. Finally, some excitement.
Archer, good to see you. Head for the helicopter in the courtyard. We'll cover you. All right, but make sure you're off this mountain in the next 15 minutes. Why? There's going to be a very large explosion.
to be an interesting adversary, Miss Archer. I've never had the chance to compete with a woman in a professional capacity. The experience has been an amusing one. Good. Then you can go to your grave happy. Perhaps. But I deem your mortality a far more immediate concern. Hand over the list, and I will kill you swiftly. How generous of you. I am not a man to trifle with. I've been perfecting methods of torture since before you were born. It would grieve me to have to demonstrate my skills on such a lovely creature as yourself. Are you threatening me or attempting to seduce me? I try never to get involved with women who want to kill me. Wise policy. Live and learn. Well, you'll not get this list in any case. That is where you are mistaken.
You've escaped with the list. The Baroness has escaped, but it's only a matter of time before she's brought to justice. Volkov and Baron Dumas are... Mr. Jones, please. Whom may I say is calling? Kate Archer. One moment. Archer, you're alive? I suppose I am. There was a report that you'd been killed in an explosion. Oh, that. No, I survived. Did you get the list? I expect a telegram within the hour. This is excellent news. Are you all right? I'm fine. Maybe a wee bit tired. Nothing a nap and a sip of scotch won't clear up. Well, let me know the moment you arrive. Okay, see you soon. She's got the list. Unbelievable. Miss Kavanaugh, please alert cryptography that Agent Archer will be sending an encoded message within the hour. This is top priority. Don't congratulate yourself yet, Ms. Archer. You've won. Nothing. Yes, well, you've lost everything. Again. Not true, Agent Archer. I still have the satisfaction of knowing that you have failed. But I haven't. We have Dr. Schenker, we have the antidote, and most importantly, we have the names of your intended victims. You still have to deliver the list. Which I shall, just as I shall deliver you to prison where you can accustom yourself to a slightly less opulent lifestyle. Ah. What a sweet fantasy. But it's not meant to be, I'm afraid. Know this, little girl. Harm does not die with me. I think you'll survive your wounds. It's not my wounds you should be worried about. Uh. Pardon me. I've got to get everybody off the streets.
poor pathetic creature. Ah, Miss Archer, I trust you're recuperating suitably? Quite so, Mr. Jones. Thank you for the champagne. It's a tradition I began back in the war, to reward my boys for a mission well done. It pays to have friends in the supply department. So, does that mean I'm one of the boys? <laughs> I suppose it does. Uh, figuratively speaking, of course. Of course. Miss Archer, I realize I have been somewhat abrasive during this ordeal. You've been a belligerent oaf. I hope you can understand that I take our collective purpose very seriously. Although I was highly skeptical of a woman's ability to handle this mission, I am overjoyed to have been proved wrong. You have gone above and beyond the call of duty in this matter for which we are all indebted to you. I wish we could offer you a proper vacation, but until unity is full strength again, I'm afraid we can't afford to let you rest. Thank you, sir, but I've waited a long time for a chance like this. I wouldn't dream of going on vacation now. <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, I'm going to go home and see if my wife remembers me. See you both tomorrow. I'd best be going too. I'm bathed in three days. I imagine I'm a bit ripe. Is this how it ends, then? How what ends? Saving the world. That's what we did, right? Yes, that is what we did. Is it always like this? Weary farewells and shuffling off home for a hot bath and a good night's sleep? A good night's sleep, if you're lucky. Yes, Agent Archer. It is always like this. Saving the world is our job, you see. If we do it properly, nobody even knows the world is in jeopardy to begin with. Not a lot of fanfare, I suppose. Just the satisfaction of a job well done. An important job. I like to think so. Good night, Agent Archer. Good night, Mr. Smith. Good night. You were right. Last night I slept peacefully for the first time since my father died. How touching. Tom? You owe me more than you can imagine, Ms. Archer. I thought you... You have no idea what I put myself through, and I'm not going to get a dime for it thanks to you. You're the traitor. Hey, I'm not proud of what I did, but I was going to get a handsome paycheck as compensation. A very handsome paycheck. Unfortunately, you had to go and blow up my benefactor. Money? You betrayed the entire free world for money? Ah, uh, spare me the self-righteousness. Everybody has a price. Even you. You don't know anything about me. Maybe not, but I've been in this business long enough to see what people are capable of. Anybody can talk about honor and patriotism, but those are just pretty words. When the money's on the table, the right amount of money, you'd be surprised how quickly you can change your tune. Do you honestly believe that? Of course I do. You know what a spy is? It's just some ordinary Joe who's willing to risk his life to sell out his country for a few measly bucks. We rely on these people. That's where most of our information comes from. The difference between them and us, other than our training as operatives, of course, is a price tag. Mine just happened to be about a hundred times as much money. And now I get nothing thanks to you. You're forgetting something, Tom. Those spies we recruit aren't patriots, they're cowards. We seek out selfish, hateful little people who place themselves above everyone else. We choose them because they're weak and greedy and arrogant, like you. Touché. Don't you understand what you did? People died because of you. Bruno died because of you. Hey, Volkov killed him, not me. All I did was supply some information. I'm not responsible for how that information was used. We'll see what the court thinks about that. I didn't come here to surrender. Pity for you.
drop your gun. Or what? Are you gonna shoot me in cold blood? If I have to. That's mighty tough talk for a little girl. Mr. Smith, what are you doing here? Tending to some unfinished business. Mr. Jones? Are you all right, Miss Archer? I. What's going on? There's your traitor. You mean Smithy? How long have you known? I've suspected you for some time. You've only just now confirmed my suspicions. All this time you thought he might be a traitor? Indeed, but I had to be sure. You might have warned Bruno. He did. Bruno! Look out! Good shooting, Archer. But what about Tom? Tom Goodman died in Amsterdam. What? But I thought... The man you knew as Tom Goodman was an imposter. His real name was Melvin Blitzney. He's a former vacuum cleaner salesman from Akron, Ohio. I don't understand. It's quite simple. Seven years ago, Mr. Jones took Smithy off the active list due to his increasingly inadequate performance in the field. Mandatory retirement came as a great blow. Smithy, many operatives, thought of himself as a man of action. He viewed his reassignment into the role of an administrator as an insult to his virility. He kept his dissatisfaction to himself, secretly plotting to discredit Jones and, in the process, line his own pockets. To this end, he recruited Melvin Blitzney, who underwent plastic surgery, extensive training, and months of voice lessons in order to become Tom Goodman for whom Smithy, meanwhile, laid a deadly trap in Amsterdam. How did Smithy hook up with a vacuum cleaner salesman from Ohio? Apparently, they met in a bar in Florida on one of Smithy's last assignments. Anyhow, with Goodman out of the way and no one any the wiser, Smithy launched the next phase of his scheme, which was to nurture a relationship with an up-and-coming terrorist organization. He chose harm. His plan was to create an international incident of staggering proportions and simultaneously cripple unity so that we would have no choice but to capitulate. Such an unmitigated failure would force Mr. Jones to step down, giving Smithy control of unity and also a handsome payoff in a secret bank account in Zurich. But what about Morocco? It was a trap meant to snare us both. Mr. Jones and I agreed that it would serve as a perfect opportunity for me to disappear for a while. You might have warned me, you know. We couldn't risk tipping our hand. You mean you didn't think I could keep a secret? Keeping a secret wasn't enough. Smithy had to believe I was dead, which meant that you had to believe it as well. I'm truly sorry, Kate. Oh, you will be. But there are still some things I don't understand. Smithy was extremely forthcoming with information for someone who wanted us to fail. Every mission he sent you on was a trap. Eventually, it occurred to him that you were far more competent than he had anticipated, but it was already too late by then. You'd outwitted him. Besides, if he'd attempted to conceal information, he would have drawn suspicion to himself, which he couldn't afford. But why did Tom, or Melvin, whatever his name is, blow up the cargo freighter? To get rid of you, of course. But Inga Wagner and Magnus Armstrong were aboard the ship. They were expendable. If you knew all this, why didn't you just arrest Smithy and be done with it? because we didn't know all this until very recently. Your investigations revealed much of the information we needed, but the final piece of the puzzle fell into place yesterday afternoon when I found this in Smithy's flat. The puppet? Indeed. Unbelievable. I'm sorry I had to deceive you, Kate. Sorry is not good enough. Do you have any idea how devastated I was? I should leave you two alone. I'm sure you've plenty of catching up to do. You certainly looked sad. What do you mean? Well, I was watching when you came to pay your respects. You were spying on me? Not intentionally. I ought to kill you myself. 
Who's buried here anyway? No one. It's an empty casket. An empty casket? Calm down. Don't run away from me. Come back and take what's coming to you. Kate, please. You're overreacting. I'll show you overreacting, you bastard. aware of the situation, Dimitri. No matter. We'll just have to do better next time, won't we? We're sending you to a remote island... <laughs> 